Hello and welcome to MaxSurf Webinar 5, Video 3 on Damage Stability. In the first two videos we looked at the effect of damage on the vessel due to the loss buoyancy method and how to set up our damage cases and our damage key points. Before we actually run our analysis however, there's a couple of tips I'd like to give you on how to verify that you've set up your damage stability correctly. And I'm also going to show you how to set up the criteria that you'll use for your damage stability. That criteria will be used for equilibrium, large angle stability and limiting kg analyses. First of all, let's take a look at a few tips for setting up your model. The first thing is that the easiest way to verify that you've set up your damage cases correctly is to run an equilibrium analysis and make sure that the vessel doesn't sink or make sure that the trim is not too large. Hydromax will give you a warning if your trim is too large. You will also want to verify which way the vessel is healing due to damage. Is it healing to port or is it healing to starboard? You'll want to run the large angle stability analysis in the direction that gives the worst case scenario for the damage case. You can check that by running equilibrium or large angle stability analyses but another useful way to check it is to run a batch analysis because that lets you run in both the port and the starboard directions and then you can review the batch results and see which direction gives you the worst case. Finally, as part of the setup for damage, you'll probably want to modify your report for your stability booklet to make sure that the damage definitions get inserted into the Microsoft Word template for the report. And you can do that by inserting this keyword global table damage definition into your Word template. So let's switch over to Hydromax and take a look at our setup for damage. So we're looking at an equilibrium condition with our arrival maximum cargo load case. But the important thing is choosing which is the current damage case. So we're going to start out by looking at engine room damage. If I run an equilibrium analysis, what we'll see is that the engine room is damaged and as expected the vessel trims down by the stern. So that looks like a reasonable result. We've probably set up our damage case for the engine room correctly. Let's switch over to a body plan view and switch to a different damage case. This is a damage case where I've set the two starboard tanks to be damaged. So we're in aft looking forward two tanks on the starboard side are damaged. First off, we're going to look at the departure maximum cargo load case. That means in this condition our tanks are nearly full of fluid and then they're damaged. If we run our equilibrium analysis, what we see is that the vessel actually heals away from the damaged side. That's because the fluid in the damaged tanks is lost to the sea, that mass is lost from the starboard side and consequently the vessel heals to port. In contrast to that, if we look at our arrival condition, in the arrival condition our vessel starts out with a very small amount of fluid in the tanks. And so if we damage the vessel in that condition, we actually see that damage on the starboard side leads to a heel in the same direction, the starboard direction. So that's the opposite of what we saw with the full load load case. So for each damage case then we need to be careful about which way is the worst case direction and make sure that we run our analyses in that direction. As I mentioned the batch analysis is a useful way to do that. If we use the option to start the batch analysis remember that there is this option to analyse in both the starboard and the port directions when we're looking at heel. The next part of our setup is that we need to set up our damage stability criteria. There are a number of standard criteria included with Hydromax, that's SOLAS criteria from IMO as well as Navy and other marine jurisdictions. But as we saw last month with the static criteria, we can define our own criteria by copying the parent criteria and then modifying them to suit our particular requirements. Damage stability criteria generally take two forms. They're either based on properties of the GZ curve, typically areas under the GZ curve and perhaps down flooding points and max GZ. And then there are also equilibrium based criteria which are usually related to margin line or deck edge immersion. When you define custom criteria you should define whether it applies to intact stability, damage stability or to both. Some of the stability criteria require you to define that a particular point becomes immersed. And Hydromax has different kinds of key points, down flooding points, potential down flooding points, the margin line, the deck edge, embarkation points and immersion points. 
the underlying shortcuts here are the values you can type into the criteria definition to specify which type of key point is immersed to satisfy the requirements of that particular criterion. If we go back to Hydromax and we open up the criteria dialog, we'll see that uh, when we're looking at a damage case, we can go through our list and we can see here we have the IMO criteria. With an IMO, we've got a section for intact stability and then the solar section has our damage stability. And so we can see here that we have uh, a criterion based on area under the residual GZ curve. And so these are the values that will be used to calculate this criterion. Here you can see there's a, an immersion angle of the deck edge. So if I wanted to change that to margin line immersion, I could type M for margin line and it would use that immersion angle instead. We can tell from the icons here that these first few criteria are all GZ curve based criteria and these two down the bottom with the yellow scales are equilibrium criteria. So here we can see that we've got a freeboard criterion on the margin line and uh, it requires the margin line to be greater than a half a meter in this case. To create our own version of this criterion, we can select the solace area and choose copy. Then we can go to the top of the tree and add a group into our tree here. So I'm going to call it project one. And then I can select project one and I choose paste. And that will automatically insert a copy of the criteria into there. And I can now modify that criteria and use it for my particular project that I'm working on. That criteria will be saved in the Hydromax criteria library and then used for that particular vessel. Remember that when we're working with criteria, if we go to the file menu, there's a criteria submenu. We can import criteria from other files. We can save our current criteria file. And you'll probably want to do that on a project by project basis so that you have a criteria file for each project. That completes our setup of Hydromax criteria and also our review of the setup for damage stability. Thank you for watching.